This video has been made possible by our amazing sponsor, Squarespace, the simple and easy way to create a beautiful and professional website. Check it out, and for a free trial and even 10% off, use the discount code found in this video. Remember, a better web starts with your website. Welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to talk about creating bokeh for your photographs. Bokeh, 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 there's all kinds of different names. I don't know if anybody really knows the proper way to pronounce it. I like to say bokeh. I believe it's like a Japanese word or something. And to me, that kind of feels a little bit more Japanese. And I kind of like the way it sounds. So if you're not familiar with what bokeh is, bokeh is all of these different diffused lights uh, that you get uh, sort of in the shape of the l aperture of the lens you're using. And most commonly, this effect is achieved by shooting a photo photograph with a very shallow aperture, something like f2.8, f2, f1.8, f1.4, something like that. Uh, here, over here on 500px.com, if you just want to search for bokeh, you see all of these different examples of great bokeh. So we're going to take a look at creating this in Photoshop. And what I've done is I have the photo right out of camera here that was shot um, in a park on a very rainy, drab, dull, gray day. But it really worked. It worked with her skin tone and her wardrobe and everything. It was great. And I just thought, man, it would really be great to have some good bokeh in the background. So we added a bunch here. And that's what we're going to take a look at doing in this tutorial. Now, with bokeh, when you're adding it yourself in Photoshop, you need to be careful that you're blurring it appropriately to make it look like it actually belongs, adding texture that's in the photo, doing things like that to make sure that it goes and it looks right and it works. Um, you don't want it to be too bright or too colorful, but it can still be pretty bright and pretty colorful. Um, so we want to begin with a good photograph. And typically, the method I'm using this tutorial, you want a darker photograph because of the blend modes we're using and things like that. Um, however, the principles you can take away from this tutorial, you should be able to use all over the place. So we're going to begin by creating a new layer and laying down a layer of base light. So I'm just going to create a new layer here and call it base light. And I'm going to grab my brush tool. I'm going to hit the letter D to make sure my foreground and background colors are black and white, and then hit the letter X to make sure white is my foreground color. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open up my brush panel by going window brush. And here in the brush panel, I can actually just start by grabbing one of these bigger soft brushes, something like the 500 pixel soft edged brush like so. And I want to paint spots of light around here, which are going to help add a, a feeling of depth and dynamicness um, to the bokeh when we actually paint that in. Now, in order to get this randomized lighting pattern, what we're going to do is we're going to play around here with the shape dynamics. So I'm going to go ahead and click shape dynamics, and I'm going to increase the size jitter to 100%. What this is going to do is it's going to sort of randomly, or within Photoshop's randomizing algorithm, choose different brush sizes. So as I click and add bits of light over here where the bokeh is going to go, as well as over here, it's going to sort of, lay, sort of give me this cool lighting pattern. Um, now, I am going to reduce the opacity, or in this case, increase the opacity of my brush. I want to set the opacity of my brush to about 40%. That's what I find works well here. I'm going to close my brush panel by hitting F5. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and just start painting um, different spots of light. So you can see, I'm just kind of painting these spots of light. I'm not going to go too crazy. Um, I know I want the bokeh to kind of get bigger as it gets closer to her shoulder here. So it's going to start out kind of thin here and get bigger as it gets closer to her body. So I'm just taking that into account as I paint these spots of light. All right, cool. All right, that looks probably pretty good right about there. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set the blend mode of this layer to overlay. All right, so you can see it's already making it much more subtle. And I'm going to even blend or blur this, I should say. Filter blur, Gaussian blur, and something like, I don't know, let's go with 30 pixels, maybe a little bit more, maybe about 40 pixels. Yeah, let's go 40 pixels for the blur. Hit OK for that. And that's great. So now we've laid down sort of this base light layer. And on top of this, um, we're going to begin painting our color. Now, if you need to, you can mask this layer off. Now, the reason I say that is because if we got, let's say, some big bits of light and they were over her hair or something like this. You know, we can go in, throw a layer mask on there and use our brush tool. What we're going to need to do uh, is we're going to need to get rid of all of this size jitter stuff because let's just say I set my foreground color to black, set the opacity of my brush tool to 100, so we're really painting with solid black. Well, if I start painting, I'm going to get all of these different bubbling sizes of my brush. See how it's an, a very uneven line? See, I'm still getting very different uh, size shapes. So in order to get rid of that, I can hit F5 and just 
uncheck shape dynamics. Great. And then just come over here and I can just quickly paint away any kind of like additional light that's overlapping her hair or her jacket down there. Make sure I get rid of any of that stuff. So great. So we have sort of our base lights layer. Um, and most of the time, if you're careful, you probably won't need a mask. But if you do, there you go. That's how we would do that. Now we're going to um, create the bokeh brush. And you can have all kinds of different sizes and shapes of bokeh. You can see like here, it's pretty well a perfect circle, pretty well perfect circle here as well. Um, but there are examples, let me see if there's an example here, um, of where the bokeh is more like a, uh, almost a, a circle but with pointed edges, like here. It's not quite a perfect circle. Um, the, the, the circle sort of comes to a point. Um, so we can really mess around a little bit with our brush, but for the sake of keeping the tutorial simple, we're going to just stick with bokeh that's kind of a perfect circle. So here's how we do this. We're going to go ahead and open up the brush panel again, window brush. And I'm going to use this same brush, or maybe I'll go to brush tip shape actually, and just choose a hard edge brush, because we do need a hard edge brush, 60 pixel default hard edge brush, which you can see here, whoop, let's actually create a new layer and call it bogey. Uh, on this layer here, very hard edge brush, nothing really to write home about. So what I want to do is begin sort of tweaking this brush and adjusting it and making it uh, really, really cool. I'm going to set the brush size pretty big uh, for this image at least. We're working with a pretty large image. I'm just going to go right to something like 650 pixels. Yeah, that looks about right. Uh, and then the spacing I'm going to increase to about 100%. Uh, maybe a little more than 100%. I want to kind of space the bokeh out a little bit. I'm going to go with 125%. Uh, this will all depend. Every time you do this, it'll probably be a little bit different. Um, but there's nothing that's necessarily exact about this. Then we're going to go to shape dynamics again. This time for size jitter, I only want to go about 50%. The reason is I want there to be some variance in the size of my bokeh, but I don't want it to be like little tiny dots next to huge dots. Again, look at the examples of the bokeh that you have. The dots are very, very similar in size. In fact, 50% might be a little bit too much. You know, something like 25 or 30% might be what's perfect. Um, but for the sake of keeping uh, things simple, we're just going to roll 50% for now. Uh, with something else you can do, you can play with the angle jitter um, as well as roundness jitter if you want to give a little bit of twist and turn and pull to your bokeh. Again, I'm not going to get into that here in this tutorial. We're going to stick with a perfect circle. But just know you have you have all these different options uh, that you can kind of play around with. Now that we've done this, I'm also going to turn on scattering. And I'm going to choose to scatter. Yeah, about 250% is a, a good number to start with. So if I'm painting with this brush, you can see it's going to drop all of these dots all over the place like that. That's really cool. However, one thing that we want is we want our bokeh to interact with itself. So what we need to do is place it on a layer that is set to a blend mode because a blend mode is going to interact with everything underneath it, right? If I change this blend mode to overlay and I start painting, you can see how now my brush is interacting with all the pixels and colors and light levels and the layer beneath it. But I even want the bokeh to interact with itself. So I'm going to do that by reducing the opacity to about 50%, something right around 50%. You're going to see, I can start painting and then paint again. And you can see the bokeh is stacking on top of itself and piling up like real bokeh does. So I'm going to get rid of all of that. And uh, now we can basically go ahead and start painting uh, with our brush. But we want to choose a good color for this image. And also, I'm just going to close the brush panel real quick. We also don't want to work in overlay blend mode. I like to work in the color dodge blend mode when I'm working with bokeh. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose an orange color. And actually wrote down the orange color that I liked here. And it is D or 9D1545. Oh, nope, that's a pink. That's the pink color. I'm sorry, I picked the wrong color. Uh, oh, here it is, D3. I grabbed the wrong one on my sheet of paper here. D3 AC11. So it's kind of a darker muted orange color. And it's not necessarily bad to go with a color kind of like this because the color dodge blend mode really makes color pop and adds all the saturation and contrast. So if you go with a muted, less saturated, darker color, that's probably going to work best. So now I'm going to begin by painting in some bokeh. All right, and I know that it's going to get bigger as it gets closer to her shoulder here. So I'm just going to sort of paint it in. I don't want to go too crazy with it, but a little crazy. All right, and then I'll do the same thing over here. You can see a lot of the sizes are about, uh, a lot of the, the circular sizes, they're about the same size. All right, so we've painted all of this in. That looks great. Um, now we have a couple things we need to do. We need to make it look like it's in the background, and we're, we're going to do that by both blurring our bokeh a little bit, adding a little texture to it, and also masking, uh, because right now, obviously, it appears on top of her hair, so it very much looks like it's out of place and it doesn't belong. Uh, so we're going to do this. Um, actually, before we even do that, let's add a little bit more color. I do have this pink color that I've written down, so let's add a little bit of some pink bokeh as well. So create a new layer, and I'm just going to maybe name this pink bokeh, 
And again, we're setting this to a blend mode of color dodge. And that color was 9D1545. Again, almost the same thing like we did with our orange, where we're taking a darker, you know, almost muted pink color. I'm even going to maybe mute this a little bit more, like so. And opacity of about 50% is great. We're on the pink bokeh layer. And I'm just going to begin adding some color. And again, these colors are interacting even with the orange beneath it. I'm going to add a couple dots near the edges just so people can distinctly see. Oh yeah, there's some red or pinkish looking colors. These are almost like the colors of uh, car tail lights. Uh, this is reddish pinkish color that we're using. All right, so cool. That's something that's pretty good. You can see if I shut off even that, that lower light level that we created, the base lights, you can see how much that's affecting everything underneath our bokeh and just giving this very, you know, randomized, lit up color and look and feel to our bokeh. Now that we've done this, I'm going to select both of the bokeh layers and I'm going to group them into a layer group, Commander Control G, and I'm going to name this group Bokeh. The reason I'm doing this is because I just want to use one layer mask to mask both of these layers of bokeh to our subject here. There's a ton of different ways that you can create a selection around your subject and every photo is going to be different. So for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to probably pause the tutorial here or speed it up and I'm just going to go ahead and brush in the edges and kind of blend everything together using uh, a black brush. Well, I'll, here, I'll, I'll get the brush set so you guys can see what I do here. I'm going to bring up the brush panel. I'm going to get rid of scattering, get rid of shape dynamics, and I'm going to make sure spacing is back down to about 25%. I'm going to use a very soft brush, in fact, so I can probably just grab this 500 pixel uh, default brush. Close the brush panel, and I'm going to create a layer mask on the bokeh layer group. So layer, layer mask, reveal all. And then I would basically begin just by doing very general painting. Again, my opacity is about 50%. So I just begin painting stuff away, you know, bringing, you know, bringing her hair back to the foreground. Um, and you can see, obviously, we get a very unrealistic glowing look. Um, but don't worry. I'd rather get rid of too much bokeh now. I can always bring it back just by painting white on the mask. And if you're not sure how to mask, uh, hop over to tutvid.com. I have a tutorial, a very quick little two-minute tutorial on how to mask that I did uh, right around the time that this tutorial is coming out. So I'm going to zoom in here, and I'm going to go ahead and fine-tune this edge a little bit, and I will be right back. Okay, and there we have it. So I've spent some time just kind of masking this stuff in by hand. Um, and there's so many different ways to do this. Um, this might not have even been the most effective way. And it takes a lot of sort of playing around and messing around with. And it still doesn't quite look right. In fact, the edge looks a little blurred. But I know that I'm going to be actually blurring the bokeh itself. And because of that, the blurred edge is going to start to look a little bit more natural. Um, but again, the more of a fine selection you can get around the hair and the more time you take making that selection around your subject, the better. And a lot of images actually might be a little bit simpler than this one to add bokeh to just because of the frizzy hair and everything we have here. You know, frizzy dark hair over a dark background might be the absolute most thing to extract, uh, most difficult thing to extract, excuse me, uh, out of anything. So I'm going to open up my bokeh layer group and I'm going to select the orange bokeh and I'm going to go filter blur, Gaussian blur, and I'm going to try something around 10 pixels. Uh, maybe a little bit less than that, maybe 8 or 9. Let's just go with 9. We'll split the difference and go with 9. And then I'm also going to choose the pink bokeh and just hit Command or Control F to give that the blur as well. So now this bokeh is definitely blurred and sitting in the background. She's sharp. She's in focus. She is the star of the show here. I'm going to set my brush to a, an opacity of 10% here. I'm just going to tweak this edge. It's still bugging me just a little bit. Uh, and the same thing over here. Just add a little bit more color to that edge of the hair. Uh, so something like so. All right, great. Now that we've done that, we can also add a little bit of noise to our bokeh. Uh, it's going to be difficult to see exactly what this does um, because you can see it's already kind of a noisy image. So we maybe don't even really need it in this case. But basically, if you go filter, noise, add noise, and add something like 5 to 10% uh, noise to something like bokeh when you're adding it, it's going to really give it a good... A texture, it's going to look like it's been captured by a camera. Um, so in this case, I don't really need it, but just know that if you're creating this on your photo, depending on the photo, noise is going to be a very, very important step to selling the bokeh, selling any any element that you add to a photograph. Usually you need to add some noise to it to really just give it uh, that little bit of oomph, that little je ne sais quoi that, that just says, yes, the, maybe I can't quite tell what it is, but that definitely belongs now. 
Um, so you can continue to refine the mask if you like. One last thing I'm probably going to do is add a vibrance adjustment layer here and just reduce the vibrance of that bokeh, something like negative 10, negative 15, uh, just like so. Now we've reduced the, uh, the, the vibrance of everything in this image. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to select the layer mask and hit Command or Control I to fill it with black. Grab my brush tool again, set the opacity to something like 40 or 50% and begin painting with white just over my bokeh. So we're going to just suck some of the color right out of the bokeh without really affecting the rest of the image. So like so, just like that. So there's before, there's after. And that's pretty much it. So you can take this, and this is a great technique to use if you're photographing something in the dusk, in the evening, at night, you've got a very blurry background, but maybe not as much bokeh as you would like. Paint this over car headlights that are already in place, uh, using color dodge, a little bit of noise, a little bit of a blur, and you get some really cool looking bokeh effects. Mix that with, you know, tweaking the actual shape of the bokeh to match whatever you already have in your photo. In this case, we didn't really have any bokeh in the photo. I mean, we did sort of have one, must have been a car headlight or something back there, but that was about it. Um, so we were really able to create whatever we wanted here and take it maybe a little bit over the top as well. But you can use this technique in existing photos that have bokeh already or photos that have none, but you have a nice blurry background where it's going to work if you add a bunch of bokeh. So that is it for this one. Thank you guys so much for hanging in, checking it out, and watching this whole thing. Remember, over on tutvid.com, there are more great free video tutorials. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, this video was generously sponsored by our great friends over at squarespace.com. The simple and easy way to build a beautiful website, a responsive website, a mobile friendly website. In fact, if you get over to squarespace.com right now and use the discount code TUTVID, you'll get 10% off your first purchase. And if you sign up for a full year, you're going to get a free domain name and it's like eight bucks a month. So I strongly urge you to get over there and check it out. They've got great 24 seven live chat available with offices in New York City and Dublin, Ireland. You can do all kinds of things with your Squarespace account, e-commerce sites, do artist portfolios. Check out some of these sites as they've been scrolling by here on the screen. There's no credit card required. You can go over there, again, discount code TUTVID, and you can start building a website today. Highly recommend it, and thank you so much, Squarespace, for supporting TUTVID. You guys rock.